Welcome to our Stump Jumper Evo Expert 2022 bike check. This is a follow up to our build choice and sizing video linked above. This isn't intended to be a full on review of the Stumpy Evo, as there are already some great reviews out there, which will tell you this is an awesome bike whether you get any of the carbon or alloy frame builds. Instead, we'll be covering the specs of the bike in some detail, and we'll get into the bike's uniquely adjustable geometry. The Evo is the more downhill oriented model within the Stump Jumper range. It features lower and slacker geometry as well as burlier suspension and brakes. The suspension on the bike is 160mm treble at the front and 150mm in the rear compared to the regular Stump Jumper with 140 and 130mm respectively. My bike has the Fox 36 forks whereas the regular Stumpy features 34s. The regular Stumpy includes a flip chip to raise and lower the bottom bracket height whereas the Evo has both a flip chip and adjustable head tube cups that allow for the head tube angle to be varied by up to 3.5 degrees. The Evo Expert comes with a carbon frame with full internal cable routing. I bought the size S5 in the bluey grey battleship colourway which I think looks very cool. And with the bike converted to tubeless it comes in at just under £32. The Evo Expert 2022 retailed for $6,300 when I bought it back in July. So let's get into the geometry of the bike. One of the most compelling features of the Stumpy Evo is its highly configurable geometry and it features both a flip chip as well as an adjustable head tube angle. The flip chip has a high and low setting which, in isolation, raises or lowers the bottom bracket by 7mm. The head tube angle can be slackened or steepened by a degree from its stock middle setting. In combination, the flip chip and head angle adjustments give a total of six different outcomes. Adjusting from the high and steep setting to low and slack drops the head tube angle from 65.5 degrees to 63 degrees and lowers the bottom bracket by 12 millimeters. The wheelbase also grows by 28 millimeters to 1300 millimeters for the S5. Be sure to check out the specialized Evo Geometry Finder website as it allows you to play with the settings to see how they affect the bike's geometry for each frame size. In practice, it's an easy process to change the flip chip setting. It's as simple as removing the rear wheel, removing the chip and reinstalling it in the alternate setting. It's an easy three minute job. The head tube angle isn't difficult to alter either, being a matter of removing the stem and switching head tube cups. Here we're comparing the stock zero offset head cup to the plus one minus one degree cup. The opening on the plus one minus one cup is off center. Placing the fatter part to the front of the bike makes the fork slacker as it pushes the steerer tube towards the back of the bike. If you want to learn more, be sure to check out our video where we switched out the cups. In our testing, the difference is certainly noticeable without being unsettlingly dramatic. It's a well thought out implementation by Specialized that gives the Evo a broad spectrum of applications. If you found this video useful so far, do us a favor and hit the like button. Okay, so how's the suspension? On the front end, the Evo Expert built has the Fox 36 Performance Elite Fork with the Grip 2 damper and 160mm of travel. The fork has adjustable low speed and high speed compression damping, as well as high and low speed rebound damping adjustment. Outback, the Fox Float X Performance Shock supports 150mm of rear travel and has both low speed compression and rebound adjustment, as well as compression lockout lever. I wasn't overly motivated to get the Fox factory suspension over the Performance Elite, as the primary differences, as far as I can tell, are the gold Kashima coating, plus maybe a small weight saving. When I bought the bike, our Specialized dealer set up the suspension per the Specialized Suspension Calculator website, and so far that seems a solid starting point. It's worth noting that the website does not include the 2022 Evo models, which feature the updated Fox X shocks, rather than the DPX2 shocks on the 2021 bike. Now let's go over the drivetrain, which is largely SRAM X01 12-speed, with the exception of the Descendant 7K crankset. The cassette has a huge range of 10 to 52 teeth, and the chainring is 30 tooth. I like that the S5 frame size comes with 170mm cranks, which gives extra ground clearance over 175mm fitted to the S6. Shifting with the X01 shifter has been very crisp. The bike also has a chain guide, and so far I have yet to drop the chain. With the clutch on the derailleur, I'm not sure I would drop the chain much anyway, but it's extra insurance nonetheless. Brakes on the Expert are SRAM code RS4 piston hydraulic disc brakes. They have lever reach adjustment, but do not include the bike point adjustment of the code RSCs. When I first got the bike, the initial feel was pretty vague, but after a handful of rides, the feel and bite improved markedly. Rotors are 200mm front and rear and provide strong stopping power. SRAM brakes use DOT fluid rather than the mineral oil used by Shimano. 
Mineral oil isn't corrosive or hygroscopic like dot fluid, so it's easier to work with and maintain, though my experience is that that's not a huge deal in practice. The dropper post on the Expert is nicely specified. The S5 and S6 sizes use our 210mm one-up post and lever. We've used one-up in the past and they have proven to be reliable and pleasant to use. The Roval Traverse wheels are made from alloy with a 30mm profile. Hubs are DT Swiss 370LN specs, the rear coming with 18 points of engagement, which can be readily upgraded to 54 teeth star ratchets. Check out our video where we made this switch. The wheels are tubeless compatible, though come with tubes from the factory. The tight integration between the tyre and the rim, combined with a decent rim tape job, means that conversion to tubeless is very straightforward. Specialised handily provides a pair of valves too. The front of the bike comes with the Specialised Butcher tyre in the sticky T9 compound, and the rear tyre is an Eliminator T7. The compounds and tread pattern have provided plenty of traction for the time I've spent at the bike park, and I'm not overly anxious to switch them out for faster rolling versions for regular trail riding. I haven't spent any time in the mud with them, so maybe that all changes when we get into the winter. The rims have remained straight since buying the bike, even after a few rapid unplanned dismounts that caused some major breakages to my ribs. They've been very solid in our experience so far. Okay, let's spend a moment going over the contact points. The Expert comes with Deity lock-on grips, no complaints there at all. The bars are 70-75 alloy in 800mm length with 8 degrees back sweep, 6 degrees up sweep and 30mm rise. I'll likely switch these out for some NV carbon bars I had on a prior bike. The stem is specialised branded with a 35mm clamp and 35mm reach. To round it out is a specialised bridge saddle which I have never noticed so it must be doing something very right. It's comfy and not overly heavy, no complaints. Ok, on to the swap box. The swap box cover incorporates a bottle cage and a storage niche for a multi-tool. We really like the multi-tool as it hits all the major maintenance situations and is very robust. The one on my daughter Millie's Evo got run over and still works like new. The swap box is great, it has lots of space, enough for a small pump, a tube and some nutrition bars. It's really nice not to have to strap these items to the frame or wear a pack for most of our rides. So we love the overall build on the bike, but what would we change? Going tubeless was an easy decision and surprisingly straightforward. We lost a chunk of weight, gained some resilience to flats and haven't noticed any appreciable air loss between rides. Next up was upgrading the 18 tooth star ratchet in the hubs to a 54 tooth item. Again this is a very easy conversion that around 120 bucks it seems overly pricey. That said I do appreciate the improved responsiveness of the cranks. I have an NV M7 carbon handlebar on my old bike which I'm considering swapping with a stock alloy item. Also, I was able to recently pick up some Code RSC brakes on sale, which I'll swap out over the winter. It will be nice to be able to control the bike point. So let's wrap it all up. We really like the build of the Evo Expert 2022. Overall the specs are at a level where I don't itch to upgrade much in the way of components. Would it have been nice to have a carbon wheel set for the money? Maybe. It's certainly a personal preference one way or another. I'll beat on the stock alloy ones for now and make up my mind when replacement time comes around. Thanks for checking out the video. Please give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe if you found it useful. Thank you for watching Dizzy Does Downhill. Make sure to subscribe, put some comments down below and like it.